Here we are again, Brother Peter, with tidbits from the Word. How can I know that I am a child of God? How can I absolutely, positively, 100% K-N-O-W, know I am a child of God? You know, when I got saved November 5th, 1972, at 3 o'clock in the morning, I had had a group of buddies that we played poker on Friday night and drank liquor and everything. I never had another poker game, never drank another drop of liquor, never drank another beer. Never did those things again that I was doing before I got saved. I knew immediately that I was different. I knew immediately that I was saved. I knew immediately that my life had taken a complete turnaround and was going the opposite direction than where I was going before. It's called being led by the Spirit. Now, remember John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, the only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. When did that everlasting life going to heaven start? It started the day that I said, Jesus, I'm a sinner, forgive me of my sin, come in my heart and save my soul. It started that day. Well, have you had to grow since then? Yes, I have had to grow in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. How did I do that? I got in the Bible, got in the Word of God and started reading and seeing what was for me. And there again, in Romans chapter 8, Paul the Apostle, who had got saved on the road to Emmaus, said, I find that in me, that is in my flesh, that I will to serve God. I really want to serve God. I want to do what God would have me do, but I find myself doing the opposite. And what do I do then? He said, that. well, I figured out. Now in Romans 8, what to do? That is, kill the flesh, die daily to the flesh, and let the Spirit lead. Over in verse 16, it said, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The Spirit of God itself dwells within us. His self, if you please, the Spirit of God is a He, the Holy Spirit, dwells in us and gives us the assurance that we are children. Listen to verse 17. And if children, then we're heirs. Boy, what a thing to be an heir of God. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Joint heirs with Christ. If so, he that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. <laughs> It's funny what a man would call suffering. What a man would call suffering may be the best thing that he ever had happened to him. Like I said, for instance, God dealt with me right off the bat after I saved about smoking. Wow, I had to give up smoking? Do I have to give up smoking, God? I don't want to give up smoking. I love to smoke. Well, the Lord said, if you're going to follow me and be an heir of my kingdom, uh, there's not going to be any smoking in heaven, and you might as well learn right now not to do it. And besides that, it will kill your body. It will kill your body. It's bad for you, and it's a bad witness. So therefore, you need to refrain from doing it. So I fought that battle and won, and since then found out how good it is to be free from the condemnation of the flesh. Now see, this is what he's talking about, following the Spirit. When I was doing the fleshly thing, that smoking, I was, I, all my heart, all the time, was under condemnation, saying, man, ah, I know I shouldn't be doing this, but... <laughs> and then I'd, I'd kick myself, and I'd live in misery, and uh, I'd get away from it for a day or two, and then I'd pick one up and do it again, and I'd kick myself in misery, and fight the flesh and one day the spirit won over the flesh and now I don't have to fight my flesh anymore and kill myself daily 
uh, over that and, and have frets and everything else. And then I had some other things I had to fight. Continually lying, I had to fight that. Continually doing this or that, I had to fight that. Get rid of it. I, that's how I knew. The, the, the thing is, how, how, who is a child of God? And how do I know that I am? Well, this is how I know I am. All things had passed away that I did. And behold, all things had become new. It said, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. What suffering? <laughs> Isn't it funny? We're so puny as human beings that we would think not being able to go to the movies with a bunch of heathens and watch a heathen movie would be suffering for Christ. No, that's not suffering for Christ. That's being delivered from the evils of this world that you might consider a pleasure that's not a pleasure that takes you into degradation. You can go into a movie hall and feel worse when you come out than you did when you went in. And <clears throat> it said, now verse 20 said, for the creature was made subject to vanity, not willing, but by reason of him who hath subject the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption unto the glorious liberty of the children of God. Now what he's saying is, is that the things of the world are bondage. We have come through a life thinking they're not bondage, thinking eat all you want, eat all you can get to eat, eat all you want, eat all that you like, eat what you like. These restaurants have popped up everywhere, self-service. Fill your plate just as high as you can fill it and fill it up and, and eat all of it and go get another plate. Hey, that is not proper. That is not good for you. It's not good for me. It's not good for anybody. It's not even good for the restaurant. And because we have come to that place today, we think that we're giving up something if we give up overeating. Well, you're not. You're, you're prolonging your life. You're, you're getting yourself in a better position. And if you follow the Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord is going to say, put a knife to your throat. You're going to be an example for Jesus Christ. You've got to be a good example in all things, not just some. It said, For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. We ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our bodies. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, what doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that which we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. I'm waiting for the day that I go to heaven and and glorified in a glorified body with God. I should, in a sense, not want to hurry that because every day that I'm here is an opportunity to win somebody else to go. And fruit, why do you plant a grape vineyard, a grapevine, to get fruit? And you don't want just a little bit, you want much. You want big hunks of grapes. If you had a banana tree, you want good bananas hanging. If you have anything, you want more of it. You plant tomato vines. You don't want a tomato vine with one tomato. That's a lonely thing, isn't it? One tomato on a tomato vine, who would want that? No, tomato vines yield hundreds of tomatoes. You plant an ear of corn. You get thousands and thousands of kernels of corn. and. That's what God's desire is for a Christian. He leaves you and I here. Otherwise, it, the minute we get saved, he just take us on to heaven. No, he leaves us here to be workers. We ought to be workers like the ants. We ought to work like the ants. We ought to work day and night. We ought to work constantly. We ought to get out here 
and win this world to the Lord. Win the world to the Lord. That is our duty. Our duty is to win one at a time, one by one. Everybody needs Jesus. Everybody needs Jesus. Okay, look, likewise the Spirit also, verse 26, helpeth our infirmities. Wow, what is one of my infirmities? Lying. So I have to take the Spirit of the Lord and say, whoops, cut that tongue off. You got a fish, he was that long, he wasn't that long, he was that long. How long was that fish? That long, no, he was that long. How much did he weigh? Two pounds? No, he didn't weigh two pounds. He weighed 12 ounces. <laughs> hey, if you caught a fish and you said he weighed more than he weighed and was bigger than he was, you're lying. And if you're lying, then you're lying. A lie is a lie. Big or little, it's a lie. How many lengths of a chain do you have to break to separate it from one side to the other? One length. So if you're lying, a little lie is the same as a big lie. And a little lie might be worse than a big lie most of the time. I heard a story one time. A group of uh, official men, they were looking for a president for a bank or such. And this group of well-dressed men got in the line, the cafeteria line, and they went down through the line. And this boy they were watching that they had in the line with them. And they were thinking of going into a board meeting and making him the head after they ate. They observed that young man, took a pad of butter, put it inside of his biscuit. When he checked through the register, he did not tell the lady he took the butter. He actually stole that pad of butter. That pad of butter cost him the job that he was going to get. Those fellows said, we observed you stealing that butter. If you would steal that butter, you would steal from us. You would steal from the bank. We no longer need you. So here's a man that did not only get promoted, he got busted out. And because of one little pad of butter. It wasn't the pad of butter, it was the principle. The principle behind the thing. If you would steal a pad of butter, you would steal money too. So be careful how you walk. Walk circumspectly to the Lord. If the Lord points, puts his finger on something in your life, or my life, and says, hey, that's not good. Stay away from that. Don't do that. Then stay away from it. Personally, I try my best not to even visit an elderly woman by myself as a man. Stay out of the presence of a female, the opposite sex, by yourself. Otherwise, you have this situation in your brain that causes you to think wrongly at times. You're following the Lord, and you're in the Spirit, and you're doing the best you can, and all of a sudden, this fleshly thought comes through your brain and comes at you. Or that person may even say something to trigger that. You do not need to be in that position. Stay out of those positions, those places. Let's get back in the book. Verse 27. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. God. If you are a saint of God, God holds your mind in His hand, and whatever your mind thinks, it's in the hand of God. If every bad thought you thought was a needle, became a needle, and pricked the hand of God, would He be squirming with your brain, or could He hold you in peace? Have you taken care of the fleeting thoughts. Are you working on it? Are you working on it? You may never completely get rid of it, but are you working on it? You've got to work at it. It's not something that would just come to you. Look at this verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, 
to them who are called according to his purpose. You say, Brother Peter, was that kidney stone you had? Was that good? Yes, it was <laughs> tough on my body, but it was good because it won some people to the Lord and got some people right in the Lord where I was at and being the witness I was supposed to be. It said, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. And whom he predestinated, he also loved. And there, that's us right there in a nutshell here. It said, He conformed us to his image of, the, of his Son, that we might be the first fruit among many brethren. I'm one of the first fruits among many brethren that have won to the Lord. And every one of us is supposed to be a first fruit and bring forth more fruit. My time has come and gone. This is Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. I must go now. See you next time. Bye-bye.